All right, we're back for number four, weight loss hack for 2019. I want to get you guys off to the right foot this year and share with you just what I see works best as far as getting the, you know, getting through the weight loss plateau, getting through the weight loss resistance that doesn't consist of calorie reducing or excessive exercise, which I think every other diet consists of that. So let's hit up number four. You can catch all the prior ones off of the website. You can check out the cheat sheet of my weight loss hacks for 2019 on Karen Martel com forward slash on or forward slash hack and you can download it so that you can start applying these to yourself and they you can also catch the videos on youtube you can get you can download the episodes on the podcast as well and it's on track with karen martell nutrition okay so let's get into number four which is my fave well it's not my fave but i definitely like it because i see it just have so much impact on just the quality of life when you fix this issue. So it is correct any underlying gut infections. Okay, so this will have a huge impact on whether or not your body will let go of weight. And I am going to tell you why. But first of all, let's talk about symptoms. I mean, these ones are pretty obvious, but I think there's a lot of things that people think is normal. They think that the farting, the burping, the heartburn are normal and they are not normal, okay? So any sort of digestive issue, constipation, diarrhea, cramping, bloating, heartburn are all signs that you have a gut infection or that you just have bad digestive issues. And we're going to get into what you can do about that and how to determine whether or not it's an infection or if we're just missing some enzymes in there. Uh, but either way, you want them corrected. If you've had an overuse of antibiotics in your lifetime, so that could even be as a child. So if you had like let's say reoccurring ear infections as a kid, which is pretty common, and it's very common to be prescribed antibiotics, especially back then. So if you were a kid that had that happen all the time and you were on these recurring rounds of antibiotics, then it can affect you later in your life. So, um, or if you've had them now, if you've had recurring UTI, inf UTI infections, urinary tract infections. I see this all the time as well. And women are on, you know, every couple of months they're taking antibiotics and it destroys their gut bacteria and causes a lot of problems, okay? Uh, high amounts of stress can also cause gut issues as well. And international travel. If you're someone like me who traveled to third world countries, and it doesn't even have to be third world, we have parasites here, but I definitely see that it's very common in people that have done international travel, um, especially in third world countries, Thailand, you know, Costa Rica, Mexico, Cuba, all of those places, um, Vietnam, anywhere, like, oh my gosh, there's so many, India. I've traveled to so many of these places <laughs> and it's very common to pick up a parasite when you're in a foreign country. So we are going to talk about what kind of, you know, what exactly you can do about it even. So first off, test if you can. You know, guessing is, is not always ideal because then you're really not sure what you're trying to kill off. And taking even natural stuff to kill off a gut infection will hurt the good bacteria in your gut as well. So you do, it's not something that you want to mess around with. And if you can afford it, get properly tested for it. Um, I say afford because your regular medical doctor is very limited to what it is that they can test for okay so if you're suspecting that there is a problem then you could go through the regular doctor first they can test do a simple parasite test which is always good to get it'll be a three-day stool test 
they can also test for something called H. pylori, which is a bacteria that can cause heartburn, chronic heartburn. So if you're somebody that has chronic heartburn, that is definitely your first step that you want to do is get into your doctor and ask for an H. pylori test. And this is in the downloads um, off of my website. So we'll, we'll print it off and take it into your doctor if you have to. That's about it as far as what a doctor can test for. And they're only going to be able to test for certain parasites and they're not very reliable. So if it comes up negative, you may want to then pay out of pocket to go and have a proper test done with your functional medicine practitioner. And you would be ordering either a GI map or some sort of diagnostics. They can do blood, they can do stool and test for candida, which is yeast overgrowth. They can test for a multiple different parasites and gut infections. Uh, they'll be able to test for even just how well you're digesting foods. And it's definitely, it's how I discovered a parasite. And my doctor had done a stool test and it came up that I didn't have anything in my stool, no parasites. And right at the same time, I'd actually gone and paid my naturopath to test me as well because I knew that his was going to be more you know, encompassing. And I, it came back, and both of them tested for this parasite. My The naturopath one came back that I was riddled with blastocystis hominis. So you definitely, if you're suspecting it, don't just take that test. I mean, if you're having, if it comes back negative and you still have all these problems, I would pay out of pocket for it. Okay, so go check that out. That functional medicine practitioner is usually best of some sort. They usually have the access to the gut testing. Not a lot of people do. So that's where you would go for that. All right. So first and foremost, get the testing. If you can't, then there's definitely things that you can do on your own that will help. So you could just do a simple parasite cleanse that will also, a lot of the same antimicrobials that you'll be using will apply to the candida, the parasites, as well as something called small intestinal bacteria, bacteria overgrowth, which is also extremely common right now, especially with overuse of antibiotics. And it's basically an overgrowth of good bacteria in the wrong place in your gut, in the small intestine. So super common, that causes a lot of really hard bloating. You can either lean on the side of constipation or lean on the side of diarrhea. So it can go either way. There's two different gases that your gut produces, the bacteria in your gut produces, and one's going to cause more diarrhea. So if there's an overgrowth of that, it's gonna cause more diarrhea. If you've got more hydrogen gas, it's gonna cause more diarrhea. Or what did I say there? Constipation diarrhea. So you want to get that one for sure. It'd be a good idea to get um, tested for. It's a breath test that can be done in certain um, naturopath, functional medicine clinics. Um, but either way, taking a lot of these antimicrobials, they're the same antimicrobials that will start to kill off those bacteria. You do want to work with a practitioner if you can on this one, because it can be extensive as far as like what you're having to do, depending on the degree of your infection. I've had some clients that can you know go to their health food store and get a 30-day parasite cleanse after coming back from Mexico, and they feel great, and they have an no problem. And I have found other people that that is not enough and they end up spending more money because they're just, that keeps reoccurring the infection. Especially candida is a big one too. It's got a really high reoccurrence rate. So to get rid of it's hard. Certain parasites are very challenging to get hard of, like the one that I have, blastocystis, very hard to get rid of. So in which case you want to work with a practitioner that's knowledgeable in this, right? So that is preferred. If not, like I said, you could do kind of an entry-level parasite yeast cleanse if that's what you think you have and see if it helps. If it helps but it's not gone yet, well, then you may want to look for somebody that can help you specifically to get rid of it, okay? So 
that would be first. Um, get rid of any sort of offending foods too. That's always really important. So you can, you know, go do take out all the high food sensitivity foods. If you haven't yet, go try paleo for a certain amount of time with no dairy for at least a month, but preferably three months and see if a lot of your gas and bloating and stuff goes away because it can just simply be diet and it can be that you're sensitive to something you're eating. So if you find that you eat something and your stomach gets super hard and blows up and you start farting and burping, well, then you might want to start looking at what it is and start keeping track in a food journal, let's say, of what the foods you ate that day. If you think that it just seems to be everything, like I said, strip it all down go with a paleo diet. If it gets better after a month, but it's not quite, you know, but you're still having some problems, go do an autoimmune paleo diet because that's taking out further foods that are high food sensitivities and see if that works. If that doesn't work, you could also do uh, do a low FODMAP diet. And you can just Google that one. But there's certain foods, there's certain carbs that will create more gas in the stomach that people are sensitive to, especially for someone that has small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. So I'm going to put all of this into the cheat sheet download and just kind of break it down for you, give you some suggestions on supplements that you can try to see if they'll help you to feel better. Um, but I'll tell you what, you give it a couple months, clear out those infections, and your metabolism starts running better. The old poop shoot starts working better, which you want to be releasing those toxins, right? And if you're leaning on the side of diarrhea, well, you want to be absorbing the nutrients out of your food, which will then help improve your thyroid, which is your metabolism. It'll help improve every system in your body. So do not underestimate the gut. It'll also help with cravings, okay? That's huge. You know when you've got too much candida in your gut, it makes you want sugar so bad. So you want to get rid of that candida. It helps with brain health. It helps with everything. So get rid of the gut infection and you'll be so surprised at how much it helps with your quality of life and with your weight loss. Okay, so that is it for number four. Tomorrow we've got our last one, number five of the weight loss hacks. I'll see you then.